we all have it and you probably are feeling it right now i'm talking about fear don't be afraid when i was younger my father used to tell me just imagine you had a flashlight when i was scared and it taught me a very interesting concept and i won't talk about imagining something unreal as that imagining you had a flashlight or a knife or a gun or whatever so we won't visualize anything here this is real work you can do on your psyche and on your body um, that will make you less afraid and i'll talk about three core principles of which the first one will be the most important and the last one will also be important but it will be more like uh, a physical thing so not a thing you can do right now but a thing you can do um, in like two years time it will take time but it'll work 100 percent of the time <sighs> Let's calm down first. Let's take one deep breath together. Hold it for a second. And let's just calm down. Let's just know that the fear we have is only in our head. We don't have anything real to be afraid of. We don't have real demons that can come into our room and just take our life or something. And then become conscious of what you are afraid of. You are afraid of that demon killing you. Are you afraid of that demon taking something away? Or are you simply afraid of it being in your room? Are you afraid of the feeling you would have right before it kills you? Probably. Are you afraid of scary images? Maybe. Are you afraid of scary things happening or bad things happening in your life? Maybe. I'm here to solve this problem exactly for you. The first thing we can do right now to eliminate our fear is to simply believe in God. What I was talking about earlier with the flashlight imagination my father taught me um, was that fear is relative. If I walk on the street and there are 15 guys hurling at me and screaming at me and they're loud, aggressive and drunk. I will be scared, okay? 15 guys, they could jump me and fuck me up. But if I had a gun with me, right, like an, like an M16 or something, right, I wouldn't be afraid anymore. And in that case, your freedom is bound to having a gun or to having security or whatever. And your fear is bound to those people. So your fear is relative off of one factor, the gang of people running towards you. And your freedom is relative to another one that isn't there and that you would have had to bring with you. Imagine something you wouldn't need to take with you that would just go with you without you even thinking about it. And imagine that thing, you cannot lose it. You can only lose it if you consciously decide to not take it with you. The thing I'm talking about is not the video sponsor or whatever, man. Look at my channel. I have 143 subscribers, so I'm not going to have a video sponsor. <laughs> I'm not going to go like, Dollar Shave Club, go and shave yourself and your balls right now in public. Um, but what you can take with you that doesn't go away from you unless you want it to go away from you is your belief in God. And if your belief is strong, you're not going to be afraid. The one visualization, the one realization that I had is that fear is relative. So it's relative to the gun. It's relative to the gang in the case I just told you. But God is always present. Fear is always relative and God is always present. Will there be things you will be afraid of with God? Yes, sure. But as soon as you're reminded of, oh, the creator of the world is with me. What could the world do against me? Nothing. As soon as you're reminded of that, it just clicks in your brain and you will just think like, oh, easy. And you'll know, oh wait, 
the guy who made this is with me? How could the thing he made destroy me? Because I live in him, I live on his path. And right now, to stop your fear in this moment that you probably have, you're probably like cowering under your bed sheets right now, or this is what I imagine, um, I want to pray with you. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let's close our eyes for this and fold our hands like this. Father, you've given this night for rest to us. And because demons hunt us, we can't rest in this night. Father, protect our dreams and secure us in your warm arms. Help us rejoice in your life because we need to rest from the hard work we've done. Give us this rest in the form of this night and take away the demons that haunt us and that prevent us from resting. Judge our dreams and that only the good ones come through, but throw away all the bad and all the horrible dreams we might have. Forgive us our sins and don't let the Satan or any demon touch us. Be in our hearts and let us rejoice on your path. Father, protect us as we achieve our purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This prayer will protect you throughout the night. Imagine this. You're playing a game with the developer of the game. And you sit right next to the developer. He you knows all the codes. He knows every little, every little glitch, every little advantage you might have. And you can talk to him. And you can tell him, hey, um, how do I do this? How do I do that? How, I do, how do I do this? And because there are too many humans and obviously he can't answer these questions all, or maybe he can, but he choose to give us a book. <laughs> a book where we don't need to ask him directly because it's very difficult to talk to him directly. We can, certainly, but it takes a lot of progress and a lot of focus to only get one lesson through this. And he decided, okay, let's write a book. And that book, all the lessons about the game I made are going to be there, like a handbook. And he called that book the Bible and gave it to the people. So read in the Bible today. Read Matthew 3 for me today. <laughs> and I want to remind you that your father is great and that Jesus loves you. He died for you. Make it count. The second thing you can do to eliminate your fear tomorrow, so a habit that you can do tomorrow, so we're going into a habit that you can do the next day to prevent fear is meditation. If you meditate tomorrow, your brain restructured in a way that you can consciously choose which thoughts you allow or if you want to block all thoughts. So we just talked about something you could do right now in this night and we're going to continue to go further into the future. And what you need to do tomorrow is you meditate for 10 minutes, exactly 10 minutes. You can also go for 15, but I would recommend going for 10 minutes. And the way you meditate is you sit down on a place and your back needs to be free so you cannot lean against the wall. I've tried it a hundred times to meditate like this because it's way more comfortable. Um, but you need to be on in, in like a seated position with your back straight because you can focus way better um, with this. 
and you basically focus on your brain being free and you focus on three things you focus on what you see right you focus on the dark spots you see and you focus on the light that still comes through your eyelids and then you do this for five breaths so you focus on the on the things on the light that comes through your eyelids for five breaths then you focus on what you hear and especially you look for the smallest amount of light you can see through your eyes the smallest spot of light like a little dot and even in the night you can see a little bit of light or you can then focus completely on the darkness on the smallest bit of darkness there are like little, little points in there if you are, are honest there are little like dots um in the on the inside of your eyelids and then you focus on the on the on the quietest noise you can hear and you focus on that for five breaths again then you focus on the smallest physical sensation you can have and that again for five breaths this is how you meditate if you fall off course if you can't focus again this is good many meditation coaches will tell you you have to focus the whole session through i'm actually going to tell you there have been sessions where i couldn't focus at all but, there were, but they were great sessions because I got so many reps in. Imagine it, when you're failing in the gym, you're also not like, okay, I failed on the leg extension. Now I'm going to get out of the gym because I don't want to fail. Um, but what makes you stronger is going through failure and not stopping when you fail. So don't stop when there is a thought in your brain. Simply refocus on the three sensations I just told you and you will be good in the night. Then the next thing you can do every single day to prevent fear is to become physically strong. And you can do this in any way. You can play football, you can do MMA, you can do whatever. You can just go to the gym. Um, but it is important that you have the confidence you could fight off something. And I'm talking of something, right? I'm talking, I'm talking a demon or something. You need to be confident that if evil sends something into your room, you need to be confident in your faith that God will be with you. But you need to also be confident that you can destroy everything you need to destroy in order to defend yourself. And fear is not only a thing you get in the night, right? You also get afraid during the day. You get afraid to open your body up. You get afraid to talk deep. You get afraid to, to breathe deeply during a conversation. You get afraid to take a breath mid-sentence. And as a result of that, you are afraid at night because the default state of your emotions is being afraid in the day. You're afraid to open up. You're afraid to speak up. So stop seeing your nightmares as the cause of your fear, but see them as symptoms. See them as something that you need to cure the cause and the cause is you being afraid during the day. And being less afraid during the day is simply being more capable because capable people aren't afraid. Ask me, I had a game day today and I straight out knocked someone out. I'm, so I'm capable of, of delivering force, let's just say it like that. It sounds nicer than I'm capable of fucking destroying someone. <laughs> um, so I'm not afraid. I know that most people in my school or in my workplace or wherever I might go would be absolutely and utterly terrified of me on the field. And you could say, oh, it's a contact sport, it's football, it's not hard, play MMA, whatever. Listen, put some pads on, please. Please put some pads on. I want to see you. I want to see you on kickoff return. I want to see you there. I want to see you catching that ball with like... 11 testosterone fueled angry people in front of you who all want to kill you and destroy your whole career and fucking like break your legs because their cold torch called them to um so if you're more capable and if you're more competent you will be more confident and therefore less afraid and that will then bowl into your night you think i have fucking nightmares no but i but there were times i had nightmares and these three things meditation prayer and believing in God and developing physical strength and being capable um, helped me 
be more confident, more competent, and therefore fearless. Because I know that God is with me. I know that I have force. And I know that I am the master of my mind. Don't be afraid. Master your mind.